Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Good. Um, so, a couple of things to think of, to discuss, perhaps, before we uh, discuss any technical things. Um, so, yeah, you saw my email that I'm uh, hopefully going off quite soon um, for a few weeks. So, the plan is that uh, AJ will be taking over. Yeah. Um, and he's keen, in, in order to minimize disruption to your project, he's keen to, um, who, he, and he also manages the individual projects. Um, he's keen to keep him as your supervisor for the remainder of your project. Okay. Um, so I think he has good experience with Python and will be able to help on that side. And uh, certainly you, you can still ask me questions around rogue waves and, and wave mechanics and things like that later on in the project if you need. But um, given that, that he's running the individual project program and he's suggesting that, um, uh, I suggest we go with that. So this might be our last meeting together formally as your supervisor. Um, but as I say, please feel free if you have any wave related questions, because AJ is not a wave person, um, to, to send me via email. Obviously, I'll be off for a few weeks but near the end of your project can still feed in. I think my understanding is that then that I would be your second marker for your for your project. Um, does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you have any concerns about that, please email me um, and we can, you know, there are other options, but this is the one that we're, we're currently going with unless, unless we decide otherwise, unless you, unless you have uh, some, a different idea. Okay, good. Um, so you've just sent me an email just before the meeting, um, which I obviously haven't had time to read yet. Uh, is this what you want to go through today? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So do you have a do you have a visual draft poster, or this is this is basically the sections you imagine you'll put on the poster? It's just the outline of the poster. Okay. Um, so I'll change the title. Mm. You're missing out the effect of spatially varying currents. That is the main thing. It's not about the fact that it's a linear wave solver. I don't think that's important. That's important. Um, I think, and it's not really. Yes, okay, it's linear wave theory, but it's also, it's really like a wave ray solver rather than a, a conventional linear theory. But I wouldn't have that in your title. I think your title should be um, Exploration of Rogue Waves Induced by Spatially Varying Currents. Okay? Okay. Because um, otherwise, I've, I just think you're looking at rogue waves in general, which are not. You're very much focusing on spatially varying currents, how that then focuses waves and creates large waves. Yeah. Um, so again, I think that's that comes into your objectives as well. I don't think necessarily um you're not really looking at how rogue waves are formed. You're looking at how current modifies how spatially varying current modifies waves in order to contribute to rogue wave, rogue wave formation and hazardous wave conditions. So again, I think your objectives should be around focusing on the on the on the effect of spatially varying varying currents. And how that contributes to large large waves, including rogue waves. Um, okay, so yeah, you've got the definition of a rogue wave, but you've got an interesting thing here, right? So in your model, yeah. in your model, at the location where I find large waves, I will always find large waves, and you're only looking at regular waves, right? Yeah. So you're only looking at waves of the same height. So you're not going to observe any rogue waves because all the waves at a single location will be the same height. So if you're going to if you're going to focus on the definition of a rogue wave, I think you need to be clear how this can contribute to the observation of rogue waves. Which one one argument would be in real seas when in not in a linear approximation, you'd have much higher local steepness and therefore higher nonlinear effects and very nonlinear steep waves. The other thing is, I guess it depends what you mean by the surrounding waves. If the surrounding waves are measured through time, 
at the one point and, the, and and then all the waves could be the same height right in your model but if the surrounding waves are spatial if i'm if i'm a if i'm a vessel and i'm driving driving my boat through a region with a spatially varying current the surrounding waves are the waves spatially nearby and if i have a localized large peak then that could also be considered a rogue wave so i think you want to be clear what you mean by rogue wave in in your context and how your project can help um identify those so i think if you were going to use that definition you'd probably use a definition that it's much larger than the surrounding waves in space yeah, yeah in in your the way you're thinking about it is in space and in terms of perhaps navigation rather than uh, uh loading on a structure or something like that but I think the main thing you want to get across is these are unusually large waves and they're localized and potentially very, very dangerous, right? So that before you go into the definitions of what things are, you might want to say, you know, it's known that sort of jet currents can cause focusing of waves and can make very large waves that just occur in in one small location and can catch people off guard, can be much bigger than the surroundings. So I think, I'd yeah, I'd maybe initially start even simpler with your discussions um the fact that waves and currents coexist people that are marking your poster might not might not know the fact that they interact maybe that's not obvious to everyone so you know talking through the fact that waves are potentially damaging and uh a ser like a, a big design consideration for all vessels and all offshore structures and that they coexist with currents that people often ignore and that if this varies in space you can get these refraction effects that cause localized large waves and that's what we're interested in understanding i think you have a good story to tell there but don't miss out don't miss out the bits to make sure people understand where the where you're talking about and yes yeah, so then the motivation yeah so you've got part of that discuss the dangers posed by rogue waves but your project is specific it's specifically on spatially varying currents make sure that's clear um yeah you could are you planning to put linear wave theory in your poster yeah okay i would be tempted not to okay. um what i mean which equation specifically would you put in just few main equation which one so I guess the question is, which ones are you including and why? Why are they relevant to your problem? If you're trying to explain, which I hope you are, trying to explain how currents are going to locally modify waves, then the two things that matter are the changes in the wave number and the changes in direction. So if you have something that demonstrates Snell's law of refraction and something that demonstrates modification to dispersion and modification to wave height through conservation of wave action, then yes if you're going to put uh, the, the incorrect dispersion relation or equations for velocity potentials that you're not even solving for in your model then i would say don't <laughs> so pick carefully if you want to show equations they need to be there for a reason you need to be able to explain them and you need all the variables clearly explained on the poster so i wouldn't just put them for the sake of having equations make sure they're important make sure you can explain them yeah there is the word to put the complex equation in the on the poster. I wouldn't avoid if you if you think it's useful and it helps you explain your story, it helps explain um, your project. If you want to show the main equations that are being solved with with the open source model and you can ex explain that well, then do. Yeah. If you if you can't explain it well, don't include it. Um, or if you're putting equations that aren't relevant or aren't the most relevant, don't include them. Okay. Um, so be be picky, be very picky, and think the whole time about you're going to have to talk this talk this through, right? You're going to have to present this. Yeah. Um, so you want it to easily flow, be a really nice story to tell. You just want to go from one thing to the next, and it all fit together. Everything follows from from the next thing to the next thing to the next thing naturally. It all links together, tell a clear story. You also want someone to at least broadly understand the poster without you being there. So hopefully it all sit together. I'm afraid I might not be able to answer the question 
due to my poor language skills. Well, you can uh, you can only try your best. Yeah. Um, and it's good practice. So, you know, you're marked on three different things, really. One is the a technical quality of the poster, one is the presentation and, and answers to questions, and one is the visual layout of the poster. So a third of the marks are on your presentation and, the, and your answer to questions. A third of it is on the, how they assess the technical quality, and the third on how well it's presented. So there's marks to be gained from all parts. Um, but it's still a relatively big chunk on the, on the verbal side. And the main thing is our practice. Um, if you're not very confident with giving presentations and and, and speaking uh, for long periods in English, I would I would write a script and I'd practice it. Okay. And on the day, I would bring it with you. If it, don't be worried about having something um, in case you need to to read. That's fine. Obviously, ideally, you would be having eye contact and it would be more natural. Um, but I wouldn't be afraid of having something there to make sure you say the right thing. When I when I gave my first talks, um, I had notes, and even I didn't end up reading them. But it's nice to know you have them. So, practice and bring some notes would be my advice if you're not confident yeah. in that respect. Okay. Um, okay. So. Yeah, you can you can include some numerical schemes, but I wouldn't focus on it. They're not, they're not your numerical schemes, right? What you are trying to do is use someone else's solver to understand more about the types of spatially variable currents and their role on localized large wave formation. So someone else has developed the theory, they've developed the code. You're just exploring the space to understand more about what combinations of waves and 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 horizontally shared currents or spatially varying currents give potentially damaging conditions. That's your main thing. So if you're going to focus on the key equations, how they're solved, and the numerical schemes, I'd keep it brief. Unless it's really relevant to your results, I'd keep it brief, um, and make sure you understand it all. Um, okay. So then. Yeah, I think having conditions for rogue wave formation is good. I would have that earlier on. Right? I would have this in your motivation. In your motivation area, you'll say, generally, we, we, we're we worried about large waves. We've got a design for them. We've got to go through them in boats. There's a, there's a bunch of different mechanisms. Um, I'm going to focus on this one. You know, I think, in general, it's good to keep it focused on what you're, what you're tackling. In the... At the very start is your is your time to talk about waves more generally, to talk about rogue waves more generally, hazards to hazards to things, and then you're going to focus on your project, which is just on one mechanism. Okay. So I would have that mechanism right at the start, um, when even talking about your objectives and motivation. Yeah. In fact, I would have the motivation. So I would go. I would have title, you know, and your name, you know. When you're talking through it, just you know who you are, what your project is called, and then I'd go straight into the motivation, and then the objective, then your aims and objectives. Because what what you want to happen is they go, okay, there's some background information that makes me clear why I'm doing this project. This is then a clear aim of of what I'm going to do in this space, which is clear for you. You know, we've got these. This clear, this clear aim of understanding rogue wave formation or large wave focusing in spatially varying currents with associated objectives. So, you know, which aspects of those are you going to focus on? How are you going to interpret the results? And then the methodology should obviously satisfy those objectives. So the way I would think of it is the methodology should be obvious from obviously the right approach based on your objectives. The objectives should obviously be the right approach to satisfy the aim, and the aim should obviously be the right approach based on the motivation. So it should all come down that way, I would say. So I would go motivation, aim, objectives, methodology. Okay. And within motivation, that's where you talk about rogue waves. And then especially very currents onto your specific project. Yeah. Um, okay, and then, yeah, your methodology... 
You have some plots? Yeah. Mm. Not, not, not I will do it later. Okay, so even just because it's you get a third of the marks for visual presentation, you're going to have to have some pretty plots. So don't make sure you take some time on that. And if you can, you, if you can do it in a clever way, that can show, you know, maybe some of your met methodology or how that links into your methodology. So, um, you know, one part of your methodology is about varying all of the input currents. If you could show like different plots of example input current profiles and then different waves propagating at different angles over them or different wavelengths i think that could be very cool so you you can use it you could in some ways you can use some of your results to explain the methodology a little bit um if you haven't got your final results which are going to be answering your main questions around what the core sensitivities are so even if they're basic even if you're just plotting nice inputs of different profiles um and some arrows of the waves or something, you know, just make it visually appealing, um, regardless of where you're up to in terms of the results. Okay. But hopefully you'd have some preliminary results. Cause so, you, you know, you run some initial cases uh, and you can show, you know, an input profile, input wave, output, output rays and output ray density for wave height um, or output height. And then you can say, okay, what I'm going to do next, what I'm going to do next, I'm going to change all of these things. And then I'm going to understand the maximum amplitude relative to the incident amplitude. And that gives me an idea how much these waves have been magnified and how much more dangerous they are in the presence of current. Um, so I think, yeah, you use your plots to your advantage to discuss your project. And then, yeah, have you, I would definitely include in your discussion of your results that once you've done your explanation of what you've done, the future work naturally follows, right? So this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do this, that, and the other, finish that off, make some plots to summarize it, understand. Uh, then I'm going to contextualize some of the profiles, wherever these could be observed in the world. This could bring the project back out to understand the implications for various places in the world. Okay, something like that. And then, yeah, have your references on your poster, but don't talk about them. Just have them there and make sure everything is yeah, any key things are referenced though. Okay. Any questions on on any of the poster? Will you present it the project poster day on March 4th? I won't be there now. You, you won't be, be the poster day. I don't think so. The baby is due um, on the Monday. Okay. And I'm taking... Uh, um, uh six weeks so yeah. very unlikely if the baby is anytime now no if the baby is in two weeks no so um very unlikely so i won't i won't be one of your markers okay. Con con congratulations on the new baby thank you yeah very scary <laughs> <laughs> cheers um yeah so no more sleep for me uh <laughs> And yeah, a lot of disruption around work, but um, I'm hoping AJ will be a good supervisor for you. Um, but yeah, he's not a wave person. So if you have any last minute questions around the waves, around the conditions you're running, around how to interpret the results or anything like that, um, maybe send an email in the next few days because uh, I don't know when I'll be going off. Um, and then, yeah, when I'm back, I'm happy to help, but not as your main supervisor. At least that's the plan. Okay, okay good. So how are you actually getting on with your project then? Have you made any progress in terms of the modeling? Yeah, I'm working on it. But you you understand how to, yeah, create your custom profiles and custom waves? Yeah, yeah and how to, inter how to analyze the results? Mm. I think I, I can do it. Okay. okay. Well, um, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. It, I think that's important to make sure you can do that. Um, it's a shame you don't have any plots today. Um, while I'm still your supervisor, <laughs> before I'm off, it would be nice to see some example plots 
uh, of the inputs and outputs um, maybe early next week. Okay. Okay. okay when when's the poster due? Nineteenth, I think. Nineteenth. Okay. So, make the plots first, so I can see them. Okay. Um, I can give you some input because uh, you're going to need them for your poster anyway. Yeah. So try and make plots that are poster quality level plots that you can use in your poster. But so I can see some of the preliminary results and how you're interpreting them. Okay. Thank you. I think that'll be a, a I think that'll be a useful step um, before the poster and before I go off. Okay, good. Um, any other any other things you wanted to discuss? Mm, what question might might the exam examiner ask during the post day? That depends on the examiner, and I don't know who they will be. So one of them should be AJ, but I don't really know him very well. Um, he seemed keen on your project. Um, I'd expect questions at different levels. So the big questions: Why is this important? Um, which locations will be interesting, which industries might benefit from your work. So, you know, think about think about that side of it, the big the big picture, all the way down to the nitty gritty stuff um, around, yeah, probably possibly how they're solving the equations. What is the what are the equations you, you the, the solver is solving and uh, how are they doing it? You can make it clear it's not your code, but they still might expect you to understand how the code is working. Um, they might also ask you questions that aren't to try and test you, but it's because they don't understand the area. So you might end up having to explain general questions on waves and currents and, and things like that. Um, you might get a question like, okay, so real real currents are quite turbulent and, and vary, uh, the profile varies in Z, but your model doesn't capture these. How would these change in the real world? How would you model these um, if you wanted to capture those physics? So you could get challenging questions around what physics you're including and what you're not, and the implications of those. Um, it really, yeah, it really depends on on who's examining you. Um, it's it's very difficult to guess, but I'd think about what questions you might ask. Um, from the very big picture, I don't from someone that doesn't know anything about waves and just wants to know um, the implications. Um, to some, to someone that's really trying to figure out how much you understand the equations, to someone that's figuring out how much work you've done. So try and think about the type of questions people might ask to probe your understanding of the big, of the of the motivation and the big problem, and your understanding of the small technical problem. Um, but yeah, it's hard for me to say off the top of my head what questions there might be. Um, I think I know what questions I might ask, but they're probably quite they'd be quite different to what, what you will get asked. Yeah. Um, so if if I would, for these sort of things, I think it's always in, a good exercise to try and write down what questions you might think and have a think through an answer for them. Okay. Yeah. I find it quite an interest, a good exercise when I'm preparing for a presentation or something. And I think, oh, I wonder what questions I'll get asked. And then all of a sudden, I'm doing loads of reading. I was like, bloody hell, I need to know a bit more about this. I need to know more about this if I get asked about that. And it reminds me of all the things that I'm not so clear on that is useful to read up a bit more before I give the presentation. So it's a good it's a good exercise, I think. OK, but you'll be fine. Uh, get some nice pictures. Make the poster as pretty as possible. If you want to send over a draft for me to look at, um, and I'm still here, please do. In future emails, from now on even, if you CC AJ as well, yeah. okay. so he can keep up to speed with the questions that you're having and the problems and where you're up to, that would be very useful. Okay. All right, brilliant. Well, thanks very much. And um, yeah, we'll, I don't know when I'll see you next, but uh, at the very least, I'll be reading your report. <laughs> and do, do feel free to get in touch as well. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Have a nice day. Yeah, you too.